welcome to another episode of Muscle IQ Physical Therapy Education. Today we are going to review a new study that's been published on the MuscleIQ.com website. So here we are on the MuscleIQ.com website and we are going to click on the free auto injury screening page. This case study, Does Whiplash Disability Score Improve After Three Months? A case study of a real whiplash patient. Author, Dr. Chris Knudsen, physical therapist at Muscle IQ in Orem, Utah. Recent studies show that recovery rates after a car accident are varied and complex. Some individuals recover quickly and fully, while others experience ongoing pain and disability. Many have, have concluded that the strongest predictor of a successful full recovery is thought to be the initial disability score at the first visit of therapy. The studies, however, do not see the problem of this unhelpful conclusion. Those starting with a low disability score have a high recovery rate, and those with a high disability score have a low recovery rate. It should be obvious that people who are less injured, perhaps a 20% disability, will have an easier time reducing their disability rating back down to 10% or less. And those that are more injured, 50% or 60% disability, will have a harder time reducing their disability rating down to 10% or less. That does not mean that it is impossible for these people to reach a full recovery. However, these same studies show that almost all progress seems to occur within the first three months after the accident. Why does progress start dropping off at three months? It is our strong belief that progress ends at the time that therapy ends. The high rate of non-recovery in whiplash and other auto accident injuries continues to drive research into whiplash and other disabling conditions, but most research is focused on how to decrease costs, not how to increase the number of whiplash patients achieving a full recovery. There is a push from many insurance companies and corporate healthcare entities who own said insurance companies for care to stop before a full recovery has been achieved. Insurance adjusters will push providers to a quick end of care and quote the Mayo Clinic saying, soft tissue injuries should recover in six to eight weeks. Most physical therapy clinics do not have the necessary data to show when a patient is still weak and needs more therapy, and so they feel unable to justify continued therapy. That is why progress usually ends at three months, because care ended at three months. At Muscle IQ, we have the machines that give us objective and complete strength data, helping us to prove the need for continued therapy in order to continue progressing the patient toward a full recovery. The following is a case study of a real patient who came in for physical therapy from Orem. This patient arrived at the clinic with whiplash, neck pain, and low back pain after a car accident. She was experiencing severe pain, a lot of weakness, and stiffness in her joints. She was reporting severe disability in her neck and back with her daily activities. After a lot of hard work and consistent visits to Muscle IQ, she experienced a remarkable recovery. We believe our car accident injury patients achieve better than expected results because of our superior evaluation techniques, skilled hands-on care every visit, world-class computerized medical exercise machines, and the computer-generated strength reports showing the progress of the patient every step of the way. Many of our patients start therapy with a disability rating above 40% and by the end of therapy have a disability rating below 15%, which we consider a full recovery. Success happens faster when the patient starts with us one or two weeks after their accident but we have also seen good results with patients who start with us a year or more after their accident. The more time between the accident and start of care will affect the duration of treatment in order to reach a full recovery. The case study patient we will be discussing came in to see us the same month as her accident. This patient was seen two to three times a week for 36 visits from September 23rd to January 10th about 15 weeks or 2.4 visits per week on average. Each visit consisted of about 60 minutes of personalized therapeutic exercises and about 30 minutes of hands-on manual therapy. The therapeutic exercises included the David Machine concept 
neck, and back exercises. The David machines are computerized medical exercise machines that offer visual biofeedback on a computer screen in front of the patient as the patient is doing the exercise. These machines help the patient perform specific exercises at the right speed, force, and range of motion. The manual therapy treatments varied each visit based on assessment at each visit and treatment types were derived from the fascial distortion model and the afferent input model. The goal at every visit was to identify pain, weakness, and loss of motion and provide treatments for each. Reevaluations and retesting was performed on the 12th, 24th, and 36th visits. The first measurement we will discuss in this case study is disability rating. Every patient answers questions about their current functional abilities during the first visit and at intervals every reevaluation day after that. A final measurement is also taken on the last visit and the scores are compared for these measurements to see how much progress a patient has made with their disability rating. The graph above shows that this patient had a 50% disability rating for her low back and a 50% disability rating for her neck at the start of therapy on September 23rd. At the end of her therapy, she had 8% disability for her back and 14% disability for her neck on January 10th. Here's a study where the authors generated a graph showing the predicted whiplash disability outcomes. Patients with a chronic or severe rating had a disability rating at the beginning of therapy above 60%. Those in the moderate had a disability rating about 40% and those with a mild disability rating at 20%. Looking at the graph here you see a steady decline to, to three months but then by six months no further progress. Another study shows the predicted chronic low back pain disability outcomes. Here we see uh, a pre-treatment assessment giving a disability rating on average of 41.4% disability and a one-year follow-up assessment showing a 27.6% disability. Getting back to our case study, this patient showed significant um, range of motion limitations uh, in the neck and the back. Uh, this shows three tests that were done uh, September 24th, October 18th, and January 10th. And the range of motion of the neck and lumbar spine, starting with significant, uh, significantly poor range of motion measurements, improving by the October 18th measurement, and all of the me uh, range of motion measurements sh within normal limits or above average uh, range of motion measurements by the end of their the first graph below shows the test scores for our case study patient on the testing dates of September 24th, October 18th, and November 24th. She started off with severe muscle weakness. Neck extension strength was 64% below normal, and lumbar extension strength was 69% below normal. Within two months of starting therapy, she had significant strength increases, but was not yet back to normal strength for several muscle tests in the neck and back. Unlike the average therapy, we continued because we saw significant progress and potential for more progress, and the patient had not met full recovery yet in strength scores or disability questionnaire scores. She may have been stuck with 34% disability in her back and 20% 28% disability in her neck for the rest of her life. As seen in the studies mentioned above, most patients do not make much progress once therapy is stopped. In this Graph number four, we show strength improving to normal in all measurements on the January 10th final test. When we look at the numbers specifically, we see significant gains in the amount of force generated by the patient in, in these uh, muscle tests. At the last testing day of January 10th, the case study patient had reached normal scores for all neck and back muscle strength tests. Neck extension strength had increased 249% from 11.4 newton meters to 39.8 newton meters. Back extension muscle strength increased by 202% from 
newton meters of force to 236 newton meters of force. Many other strength scores increased by 400, 500, or even 600 percent. This case study followed the progress of a patient with whiplash and low back pain after a car accident. They presented at the start with 50% neck disability and 50% low back disability, and significant weakness in the neck and back muscles. At three months after her accident, this patient had close to 34% disability in her low back and 28% disability in her neck, the typical outcome three months after an accident. However, care continued for another month and a half, which resulted in a reduction of disability in the low back to 8%, and in the neck to 14%. Her improvement was much better than the expected when compared to research study outcomes, which show minimal to no progress after three months. We were able to show objective strength testing reports for the neck and back muscles because of the use of the David Spine Concept machines. This patient showed amazing strength gains and a return to normal strength for all neck and back muscle strength tests. This was a truly successful outcome for a patient with a bad prognosis, based on the studies discussed in this case study. She may not have reached such a good outcome without the unique treatments and exercises found only at Muscle IQ. Our objective data gave us the necessary information to justify continued therapy so that the patient could reach a successful outcome. This study shows the benefits for patients to receive more than the standard six to eight weeks of care after an accident, as long as the patient is making progress and the therapist has objective data proving a lack of full recovery. Further case studies should be done showing the outcomes of patients with greater than 40% disability who present six months or more after their accident to document actual results for these types of patients. Thanks for watching today's episode of Muscle IQ Physical Therapy Education. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to Muscle IQ Physical Therapy on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.